Hi everyone and welcome along to this series of lectures on transportation impact assessment, commonly known as traffic impact assessment or TIAs. Um, my name is James Reynolds, um, I'm a traffic engineer and I've been doing TIAs for a large portion of my career so far. And in this series of videos we're going to take you through uh, how to do a TIA and tear apart one of, uh, a couple of the TIAs that I've done in my professional career career so that you can see all the various steps. So here we go, let's get started. Right, so the learning outcome outcomes of this first video are very much just a general outcome of how you get started on this sort of stuff um, and some of the, the sort of the header material. Uh, how do we decide what the proposed development is and the study area and how do we describe the existing conditions? All basic stuff to get started. First of all, the key thing is to look up the requirements for your TIA. Um, TIAs are written for a reason, predominantly to get some sort of approval through a planning process or um, some sort of, you know, impact assessment that will, will, you know, lead into some sort of process that means that someone can go ahead and do this development or change the road network. And so the first thing you must know is what are the requirements uh, of the people who are going to assess your TIA. Um, so here's an example of one that I'm familiar with from Toronto. Um, there's a big, huge, long laundry, laundry list of things you need to do and various requirements and settings and software and all that sort of stuff. And these tend to vary significantly from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. And one of the most important things is to make sure that the thing you're writing is what the people who are going to read your thing want. Um, otherwise, you're just going to be wasting your and everyone's time. So uh, in Australia, we have the Guide to Traffic Management Part 12, which talks about traffic impacts of developments. Um, many councils will use this as a base document to uh, determine their um, requirements, um, but you might find that the, an individual council might have uh, additional requirements or you know particular settings that they like in software, so it pays to be either checking on their website and more importantly having a chat to the local traffic engineer who is going to ultimately re review your report. Um, here's another example from the Queensland government. They have quite an extensive website on guide to traffic impact statements with videos and case studies. Um, realistically, if you want to know more about this uh, subject, go and have a look at their website, watch some of the case study videos. Maybe, you know, go and have a look on other websites and there'll be so much information out there at various city levels. Um, yeah, that's the best way to learn how to do this sort of stuff is to get out there and see some of the requirements and all that sort of stuff. But for this series of videos, I'm going to mostly be focusing on a particular example that I was involved in in Toronto. Uh, this is a place in Bathurst Street, which is sort of inner city Toronto, and yeah, this is a real project, and yep, I helped write the TIA. Um, it's a while ago, so I don't remember all the details, but where I can find details in the publicly available reports, I'm going to talk about them. Um, where I can't find details, I'm going to make stuff up, or I'm going to look for examples from other similar reports that I can think of. Um, and yeah, the standard disclaimer, this is for teaching purposes only. They're all my comments and don't reflect the opinions of my then employer. So, you know, uh, don't sort of take this out of context. This is for, for the purposes of these lectures. So here we go. This is where you find all the details about the site. It's on the City of Toronto Development Projects. And you can go on there and they have a GIS and you can click all the buttons and learn more about the development. And you'll see here's where it is at at the moment. Um, they have a description of what they're planning on doing. So they've got a proposal in for site plan approval and to rezone the land and they want to demolish some existing stuff and build a new three-story building. And there's all the gross areas and they're going to build some parking as well. So you can see there's two applications going on in this sort of thing. There's the site plan approval, which is sort of the very detailed application where everybody looks at, well, this is where your garbage is going to be, and this is where the front door is going to be, and all that sort of stuff. And then there's a higher level application also, the rezoning, and that ties into urban planning, 
and whether the, the land itself is appropriately zoned. Are you allowed to have a three-storey commercial building on this piece of property? Um, so you can see the site plan approval uh, looks to have gone through, so that file's been closed. Um, whereas the OMB appeal means that that rezoning has actually gone to a quasi-judicial judicial process in Ontario called the Ontario Municipal Board. Uh, we have a very similar process here in the state of Victoria called VCAT, the Victorian Civil and Administrative Tribunal. So that means that it's gone to the local council. The local council's made some sort of decision uh, based on a, on a vote in council. And then someone or other has appealed that vote um, and appealed that decision. And now it's going to another body that hears those appeals. Uh, so this is a fairly standard sort of uh, thing that happens in these things. And the key thing is that at that OMB appeal or at the VCAT hearing, um, you know, they might call witnesses who might include you as the traffic engineer and you'll have to get up there on the stand and, you know, respond to questions about your report and where you say, yes, this is a reasonable development and I support this development going forward. Um, you'll be questioned on that and the logic behind why, you, why you've come to that conclusion will be tested um, in a lawyer environment, basically. Um, some of these are in the quasi-judicial, so um, it's uh, not, not completely formal, not in an, in an open court setting. But fundamentally, if you write something in the report, um, you should expect that at some stage, someone might want to question you on it. And you'd better have a good reason for saying, I support this development, um, because you, that's fundamentally the reason that you're being called as an expert witness and the reason that your client has employed you to do the report in the first place, because you know what you're talking about and you can prove it. So here's all the other stuff that's going on on this site. You can see there's all sorts of documentation that's been submitted. There's shadow studies, there's loading studies, there's a stormwater study. And here we are down in the very bottom, a transportation impact study. So we're just one of the many drawings that has to be, or reports that has to be put forward to support a rezoning or a site plan approval. It's quite a complicated process sometimes. Uh, the site itself, here we are in the middle of Toronto, it's just near a hospital, uh, Kensington Market area um, off there to the east is this sort of um, funky neighbourhood with, you know, really small shops and quite the vibe. Um, and yeah, we're here on the, what's that, the west side of Bathurst Street and we're up and down that side of the street. Uh, that's what it looks like before we before the job started. There was this old radio um, store which closed down. Um, there's streetcars running down the middle of the street and right now or at least as of September 2018 the thing is under construction and you can see it's quite the change you know we're going from a, a smallish sort of store with some off-site parking to this sort of building which is you know there's going to be a lot more activity there's actually going to be a supermarket in there as well I believe um, so yeah it's quite the change and you can see why um, there'd need to be a report on whether the traffic impacts and the transport impacts are going to be reasonable and acceptable. So, yep, there we go. The first thing, obviously, you'll need to be able to do is describe what they're doing. So there's the basic description. Um, if you look in the traffic report, uh, there's a bit more of a detailed description, which very much talks about how the vehicle access is done and uh, how lanes will change and where the loading will be done and here's a bit about how there's a supermarket and and um, there's going to be you know this many square meters of this and all of this sort of stuff so quite detailed um, things which you're going to need later on in the report um, of course you won't be the only technical person working on this there'll be a team of architects and planners and all sorts of people so Here's uh, deep in the report, in the appendices, here's some architectural plans. You can see the layout of the parking garage on the right there. And what's that on the left? That looks like the ground floor layout. So you can see all these retail areas and it looks to be a shared corridor, all this sort of stuff. There's some loading bays down there um, on the, what's that, the west side? How do I make this pen work? There it is. 
that looks to be the loading area. Um, you've got an intersection here and an access out to this laneway up the back. Um, and then a whole load of doors in and off, off, off the street. So it looks like the, you get down to the garage down there, which then becomes this ramp. And then there's downstairs parking for everybody who arrives in a car. Um, and then the next bit, of course, uh, is where, what's the study area? What are you going to be looking at um, as far as the intersections? Um, are you going to be looking at half of the Toronto downtown or are you going to be looking at just the little intersection that's right outside the door? Well, you know, you'd need to talk to the local traffic engineer and look at their standards, find out what they'd want you to look at. Um, you can see for this uh, site, it's been, look at this intersection here, Nassau Street, um, and then look at the signalized intersections on either side. So Bathurst and College, and Bathurst and Dundas. And then there's a bit of a description about the existing conditions. Um, so just so everybody knows, well, that's what their very quaint um, Ontario thing, there is actually a store called The Beer Store. And yes, you do go there. And the only thing there is to buy is beer. Um, but, you know, here's some more details in the report about the lane configuration, the site location. And then there's more and more descriptions about what the streets are like and when it's busy and when the parking's prohibited and all this sort of stuff. So details, details, details. That gets us to the end of the first video, uh, which sort of described the general conditions and how to get going on these sorts of things. Stay tuned for the next many, many videos.